Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 16 on how to develop that great and successful and rewarding engineer, engineering career. Now this is something that I think is really important today and what I'm going to talk to you about is I'm going to talk to you about the importance of communication. Okay, Communication, being able to effectively communicate is a differentiating strength that will enable you to get ahead in the engineering world. Okay, It'll allow you to get better raises, it'll allow you to get better bonuses, it'll allow you to get promotions. Okay, So let's, let, me, let me explain this why this is so important because I think first of all most people that go into engineering tend to be introverts and what that means is as an introvert you sort of want to be the invisible man. You want to go to that meeting and you want to sit there and just get in and out of that meeting because there's people there and you don't like being around people. You want to get out of that meeting and get back to your office where you can close the door, be by yourself and be the invisible man. And then hopefully kind of get out of the, you know, get out of the building and get to the parking lot without running into anybody and without having to socialize and get in your car and get home to your comfort zone where you got your computer and you got your different stuff that you like. And, and it's okay. I mean, you know, it, it, introverts are great, right? I mean, but the thing to understand is, is the natural tendency is, is that, that, that the, I think that, that engineers are predominantly going to be in that, that corner of the parameter space of being, uh, uh, kind of like a combination of introverts and socially awkward. Okay, so what does that mean? That means it's an opportunity for you. What is an opportunity for you to get ahead? Is to overcome your basic nature, overcome that basic fundamental engineering mindset and to be different. And when you're different, then boom, you're going to have the chance to be successful. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you've got an organization and you've got two different engineers in it. One is the most accomplished, most talented, most respected, and best engineer in the whole company. Okay, you've got the primo engineer. Guy number two, he is a competent engineer. Not the best, but he's competent. He is a solid, competent engineer. Plus, he's got great communication skills. Now, an opportunity comes up for promotion. Which one of those two are going to get promoted? I promise you almost every single time it's the guy with the communication skills. Yes, he needs to be competent in engineering, but being competent plus being able to communicate that's going to trump being the best engineer in the world. So what do we do as engineers when we get on the job? It's just like, man, I want to be a better and better engineer. And like right now I know AutoCAD, but now I'm going to know AutoCAD and SolidWorks. And then I'm going to do this and I'm going to write this paper. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then it's like we're kind of surprised that our career isn't going anywhere sometimes. Well, maybe you need to focus a little bit less on you know, you're already a good engineer, you're already a great engineer trying to like squeeze another few drops of blood out of like being a better engineer. Maybe you ought to think about some of these other skills, some of these softer skills like communication, maybe interpersonal skills, maybe social skills, because if you can be a good engineer and you pile on top of that some social skills, you're going to be in management. All right, well, why is the communication so important? Well, if, I, if I'm going to promote someone to be manager, I need somebody that can interact with customers. Okay, I need somebody that can go out outside the comfort zone of our little building and go out into that cold, cruel world, go into somebody else's building, go into people that they don't know and effectively communicate what we are doing why we're good, why they should buy our product, why they should hire us for a certain job. Okay, That's more valuable to me than a guy that is just continuing to build engineering skills. And so communication is real important. And in fact, uh, communication is so important that I think after this series, I might just do a whole series of lessons on communication. Like, man, what are the keys to a successful PowerPoint presentation? What are the keys to a successful, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, a presentation where you get up in pr front of people and, and present because engineers are horrible at this. But the good thing is you can learn. 
You can learn. You're engineers. You know how to learn. It's just, I will give you the steps. You will follow them. You will be successful. But you got to be able to give a good PowerPoint presentation. You got to be able to go out with someone at lunch and communicate over sort of a business type of uh, a business type of lunch. You got to be able to write things. You got to be able to write things and communicate crisply and clearly, both both uh, orally and written. Okay. You need to be able to communicate in different ways. The guy that can communicate is gonna be the guy that gets promoted. Okay. That's bad news for you because you're afraid of communicating, but it's good news for you because you can make the decision that I will learn how to communicate and then I will get ahead. So I'll be doing a whole series on this, but for now, let me just give you a couple of pointers. Number one, don't be the invisible man. When you go to a meeting, make sure that you speak. Don't just sit back in the corner, in the darkest corner, and take notes and then run back to your office. Speak. Speak up. Don't talk too much, but, but do talk. Let the people know something that you know. They're talking about testing. You might indicate that, you know, right now the backlog in testing is running about two or three weeks and, and we're really kind of getting balled up. We could use some more help down there. You know, say something. Speak. Speak up in meetings. Don't be the invisible man. Okay. Secondly, when uh, I, I think, you know, if I were just going to give you some high level tips on communication, uh, one thing is uh, there's a tendency for engineers to be poor communicators because they give way too many facts, way too much data and not get to the bottom line. And so like if you have a PowerPoint, your, your, your tendency, your natural tendency is to take an Excel spreadsheet and put it on there. It doesn't quite fit. Put it in eight point type and get 8,000 pieces of information on that spreadsheet to where what's on that PowerPoint slide to where what's really needed is our integrated circuits are failing because of oxide ruptures. Okay, that's what's needed, the bottom line. And then being able to defend it and being able to give the reasons for it. And then if they need, get into all this stuff you know. But you've got to learn how to get to the bottom line. What matters? you got to get to that one sentence that matters and then be willing to discuss it. But you get so wrapped around the axle in the 2,000 measurements that you made and then what happened in the, uh, you know, in the environmental oven and then how your feedback and you just start going all these different things that are important to you but don't matter in the overall scheme. In the overall scheme, what matters is we're not delivering integrated circuits because of ox oxide rupture problems. So, so in communications, you need number one, don't be the invisible man. Number two, know how to condense it down to the bottom line. Okay, same thing in presentation, I mean, in, in, in reports that you write. Man, have that executive summary on top that is one paragraph. What did you conclude? I conclude that our integrated circuits are failing because of oxide ruptures. The oxide ruptures are related to arcing in the furnace. Arcing in the furnace is probably related to a new uh, transformer that was put in. Future work, we need to do tests with the old transformer and the new transformer. Boom. That's what it is. Now, you did elegant work. You did beautiful work. You did hundreds of hours of work. You did experiments. You did all of this wonderful engineering, but it led to that one paragraph. Now, in your report, you can give all of that so that you give backup. You back up what your conclusion is. But man, as a manager, a lot of times I trust you. A lot of times you know more than I do. And what I just want to know is I just want to know what the bottom line is. Engineers are notoriously poor at getting to the bottom line. What's the good news? The good news is you can differentiate yourself by in a in a written in a written form in a written report always give that crisp, concise, conclusive, easy to read executive summary at the top. Same thing on your PowerPoint presentations. Don't put so much information on there. Don't overwhelm them. Be willing to be ready to defend technically what your conclusions are, but make sure that you just give those conclusions. Sometimes you get so lost in the trees, you're not showing people the forest. You got to show them the forest and then if needed and only if needed, be ready to talk about the trees. Okay, but you jump in and you start telling them about every tree in the forest and they don't get any clue about what the forest is about. Just they hear about a bunch of trees. Okay, so communication. 
you've got to learn to come out of your shell. You've got to be willing to get up in front of people and talk. It's going to be awkward, but just say, hey, I'm going to start giving presentations at meetings. I'm going to start talking. I'm going to start being the guy that they want to get in front of customers. Because it's kind of like when I was a manager, I had two groups of engineers. I had the group that I want to make sure that I sort of kept hid, like, uh, Joseph, now I have a customer coming in on Friday. I need you to stay in your office. Okay, okay, I'll stay in my office. He's happy staying in his office because he's an introvert. But the last thing I want is Joseph coming out and embarrassing me because he's socially awkward. So he's an introvert and socially awkward. Then I've got the guys like, man, you know, uh, uh, Nathan over here, he's very personable, even though it's not his nature because he's an engineer, but he can interact with the customer. He's the guy that I want to put in front of the customer. Now, when it comes race time, who's going to get the biggest race? The guy that I put in front of the customer. Who is going to get the bigger race? The guy that can communicate. Who's going to get the promotion? Who's going to get the bigger bonus? The guy that can communicate. Okay, it doesn't come naturally to it, but you can learn. And how are you going to start? Summarize communicate the big picture. Don't be afraid to speak up in meetings. Talk to people. Try to interact with people. How about this? Over lunch, instead of going in your office and closing the door, how about going down to the commons area and sitting with other people, having lunch? It's what people do. They interact. They communicate. Okay, this is just a quick overview to kind of give you a heads up that this is important. And I'll be having another whole series on this. I'll probably tell you how to take good pictures with a camera. Probably talk to you a little bit about Photoshop. I'll talk to you a little bit about PowerPoint. Talk to you a little bit about graphs and how to how to communicate data to people. How to take something really complicated and bring it down to something simple that you can communicate quickly. I'll be doing all of that. But right now is just a heads up. A make or break on you moving forward in the company very well could be based on how well you communicate. All right, do you guys think I'm crazy? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Leave comments below. I want to hear back from you. Okay, maybe I am just a crazy old man. If I am, somebody needs to tell me. Somebody needs to tell me you're a crazy old man. Get off of YouTube. Okay, I need to know that if that's the case. All right, so look forward to hearing your comments. If you uh, like what you've think, seen, think about giving us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this on your social media. Okay, Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I'm going to talk to you guys later.